All right, how's it going guys? Today is the day that I'm doing my Q&A. So I've pulled some questions from various different videos, some of which I answered uh, in the comment section, um, as well as I had some people email me or DM me and ask me some questions. So I'm gonna answer some of those and uh, just kind of pulled them from all different places. So um, hopefully we can do a few more of these in the future and keep asking questions. Uh, you can ask them right there in the comment section below um, if you have any questions for me and they can be of any nature. I'll try my best to answer them uh, as long as they're appropriate and whatnot. So first question, how do you get your pull-ups to be more explosive? Well, that is a good question. Um, if you want your pull-ups to be more explosive, what you'd want to have is a better strength to weight ratio. So um, there's a few different ways you can do that. One is to increase your pulling strength. Um, so that would be doing, rather than just a bunch of pull-ups and doing them uh, more often, you'd want to do a harder pulling movement with lower reps. So uh, whether that be weighted chin-ups or working towards a one-arm chin-up, those would be good options for that. Losing body weight as well. Uh, if you have a little bit of body weight to lose, if you lose that, your strength, uh, without losing any strength, your strength to weight ratio would go up. So that's generally the best way to get more explosive pull-ups. Um, your biceps is typically a more slow twitch muscle than uh, something like the triceps. So uh, it's a little bit more difficult in those kind of movements, but it's still very um, possible and just developing efficiency with the uh, the motor pattern and making sure that you're doing it um, Full range of motion and under control All right, so this one was on the ballet video. Thanks for sharing would very much appreciate some starter ballet movie moves in a video Do you find that it is a solid calf workout as well? So yes, I will be doing um, a video uh, showcasing some of the sequences that you guys could um, learn from ballet. I'm definitely not an expert at that, so um, won't be too in depth. But it will be some of the things or drills that I feel you guys could benefit from and could help with other things, such as uh, parkour gymnastics or any sort of movement practice. Um, but yes, it definitely is a solid calf workout. Uh, I remember sometimes that. Uh, I would have to roll out my feet and calves and stuff like that afterwards to prevent it from cramping up because um, you use it so intensely in a way that you don't really in other sports. Uh, I can't think of any other thing um, non-dance related that you would uh, be held up onto the tip of your toe for extended periods of time while maintaining balance on one foot and changing your different body positions. So, um, it's excellent uh, for that kind of thing and there are great videos online that can showcase some of those uh, movements that you could involve in your practice as well. Uh, how often do you lift actual weights? Since I started boxing, I have less time for it and lost a great deal of muscle mass. I'm sorry that you lost muscle mass, but realistically uh, it isn't everything. Sometimes your body knows where it wants to be better than we do. Um, we, are so, we are sort of socially conditioned that there is one ideal image, but realistically it's what you are happy doing, what you enjoy um, doing with your time and how you, um, and how about you feel, your, uh, how you feel about yourself um, will change, not necessarily based on your outward appearance, but your inward uh, happiness and how you are uh, working towards what you're truly meant to work towards or what you're put on this earth for. Um, but how many times I lift weights a week? Um, that somewhat depends on what you consider weightlifting because um, I do some accessory movements generally at the end of any given strength training session with weights. And it could be like external rotation of the shoulder um, just done with like five pounds or something like that. But uh, the majority of my upper body weight or upper body training would be body weight movements, a couple accessories. I do like to overhead press because I find it's a very functional movement and um, I cannot do very many handstand push ups, so um, it helps fill in that gap. Uh, but I do Olympic lift probably uh, one to two times a week. Um, when I was focusing on strength training more than I was the last several months, I did it twice a week. I did kind of a snatch based day and a clean based day and do front squats, back squats, uh, snatch grip pulls, um, 
you know, natural leg curls, all that sort of stuff um, within those and uh, tried to go very heavy, uh, relatively heavy, heavy for me, um, just to try to really kind of um, hit the nervous system hard and also get those hormones that come out when you uh, exert kind of close to maximal force, uh, kind of the heavier you lift for natural athletes will help, uh, will help increase production of anabolic hormones naturally. So, uh, that's kind of what I rely on uh, to get those. And, uh, yeah. And I just enjoy it. Honestly, uh, I'd prefer, you know, squatting heavy versus doing a ton of, uh, pistol squats. That's just me. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing body weight training for your legs as well. Uh, it, it all just depends on your goal and make sure that you don't get too caught up in any one, like I am a body weight athlete, so I can only do body weight activities for everything. Just think about what you want to do, what skills you want to do, what makes you happy and what is the best way and most precise way to get there. And also what you have available. Have you ever worked with Ido Portel? If so, how was it? No, I have not worked with Ido Portel. Um, I would definitely love to. He has been a big inspiration to me and it kind of, uh, I originally saw his video through, uh, strength camp talked about him and I, I watched his videos and I really enjoyed his philosophies and stuff like that. And I absolutely, um, agree with a lot of what he says, but I also have disagreements and stuff. Um, but I, I would definitely hope to one day travel and, uh, get to train with him, go to one of his seminars or something like that. And, you know, just kind of pick his brain a little bit if I have the opportunity. Um, there's a lot of things I do have to do before then. And there's a lot of great other people out there um, to learn from that I've realized uh, from different movement practices. They may not call themselves a mover or, you know, movement as their um, primary discipline, but uh, doesn't take away from the fact of the the amount of knowledge they have about their discipline or disciplines and uh, how you can apply that too, right? So it's uh, it's how you adapt their information that they give you as well um, dictates what you can get out of it. How do I get started with these awesome jumps? Do I focus on jumping higher at the beginning? Um, I think this one was on my uh, my video where I was doing flips outside. Um, well, uh, to get started with that kind of thing, uh, good mechanics of jumping, yes, is important, but it's not just about how high you can jump. There's a technical side to um, how you control your body on your flips and stuff like that, and oftentimes learning it in a safer environment, uh, like if you have access to a trampoline or a gymnastics facility, will help, um, one, conquer the mental fear of falling, and two, there's generally people around to um, give um, technical advice because you probably will fall uh, several times when learning anything and you want to make sure that it's in a controlled manner and you can uh, start to learn how to do it right after you've learned every way to do it wrong. Um, but that, then again, um, the higher you jump, the more you can compensate that with um, the technical side. So. Unfortunately, I have a fairly high vertical, so that was able to kind of uh, cover up some of my mistakes on my backflip, and I was able to get around before it was very efficient. Um, but uh, I recommend trying to think about how to make everything as efficient as possible, and then you can worry about how high it is uh, to make it look cooler. Diet is a tricky subject because uh, I tend to try to stay away from it to some degree because I know a lot of people have very... Uh, very passionate views on their specific style, whether it be paleo or vegan or anything in between. Um, but the way I see it is, um, like what you feel the best eating, um, uh, what agrees with your morals and what you have access to kind of, as long as you can line that up and you feel healthy and you feel happy, that's really what matters. And, uh, also try to just kind of stay away from foods, or meals that have both high um, carbs and high um, fats. Kind of one or the other generally seems to work better just for the way you digest it and, you know, kind of all the enzymes and stuff that are associated with that. Um, that would be my kind of 
suggestion and uh, and try to eat things that only exist in nature, right? There's all those things like if it has a commercial for it, you probably shouldn't eat it, right? Basically, if you can't hunt it, you can't grow it, um, you can't forage it in nature, then it's probably not that good for you. Is there any particular order um, to do the exercises? Say in one of your exercise videos, you suggest doing straight arm, then bent arm the next day, and so on. Is there any specific reason on doing straight arm first and bent arm second? So uh, as far as bent arm, straight arm strength, uh, generally I just suggest to split it up between your leg days just so you give your upper body a little bit of a break. And uh, whatever one you find more difficult, do it first because uh, you have a little bit more energy, a little bit more gas in the tank, so it's better to hit that first. And for most people, that probably would be straight arm strength because uh, it's not as familiar of a movement for those that have not done gymnastics or anything similar. So uh, until you develop that comfort with it, I would say probably do the straight arm strength first. But if you, uh, if you feel completely competent with it and bent arms, kind of you're pushing the limits more, maybe do that one first. But realistically, it shouldn't make a world of difference, right? As long as you're hitting both within uh, a week window, um, maybe a couple times, uh, you should be doing fine. What about animal walks? I am regular at the gym. I can lift heavy, but I feel a lack of tension when I perform push-ups using body weight, so I tend to add more weight. Can you give me some tips on transitioning from lifting heavy to focusing on body weight and maybe concentrating on movement entirely? Absolutely. Um, a lot of people find this difficult and I think this is due to the fact that a lot of people um, compensate form and uh, quality of movement with uh, intensity or with, uh, with load, right? Um, so this can be even when you see someone maybe rowing uh, a dumbbell. Right? You see people kind of whip their shoulder back and pull right, to try to get up a lot of weight. But realistically, you're not engaging the muscles that the movement is designed for. So reducing the weight and really taking it slowly, and developing that time under tension. A lot of the times you have to build the strength through hypertrophy training, especially with body weight training. So doing it slower and making sure you emphasize every portion of the movement, um, the beginning and the end, is much more important. So when I do something like a pull up, I make sure that I fully lock out and then I pull my chest all the way up to the bar, squeeze, and I do that over a couple seconds. And I try to make it very slow, very deliberate and very conscious of my technique. So that will kind of help you develop that proprioception and body awareness. And it will also lead into better hypertrophy and strength for those movements. Um, and just with anything, the more time you spend doing it, the better you will get at it, the more understanding you'll have of your own body, which translates into whatever different movement practice you decide to do. Um, but there isn't anything necessarily wrong with lifting weights too, to supplement, uh, your training. If you feel like you get more out of certain movements, right? You don't have to, um, you don't have to just be one or the other. Just think about who you want to be, what you want to do, and uh, again, just tailor your training towards um, becoming that person or where you think the quickest and most efficient way is to get there. Your videos are awesome. Do you have any tips on training with tendonitis? I recently got it inside my elbow and I'm itching to get back to training. Um, yeah, so tendonitis will come around fairly frequently um, in any different sport pretty much. It's generally overuse injuries um, and that's from repeating a movement pattern too much. So, um, and that's not the only way, but you might want to look at where, um, where you're getting the injury. So you're saying inside of the elbow, uh, that's golfer, golfer's elbow, right? And uh, that might mean there's an imbalance in your tricep as well, um, it could mean a bunch of different things. You might wanna see if it's tendinosis versus tendinitis, there is a difference. Um, one of the quick fixes is using voodoo floss bands on your elbows and making sure you stretch it out and it kinda of grabs up all the different tissues 
and uh, you're able to stretch it in a much more efficient manner. Um, that can be a quick fix depending on how uh, severe your injury is. You can check out Kelly Starrett and Mobility Wad on YouTube uh, for more um, specific information and videos demonstrating how to tackle that. Um, and if that doesn't work, maybe, you know, um, think about golden paste. It's kind of a mixture of curcumin, um, olive oil, water, and cracked pepper. And that can be one of the most, uh, uh, the best ways to treat inflammation and stuff like that. So I would say that might be a good opportunity. And as well, look at your training. Are you overloading certain joints? Are you doing certain motions too much and neglecting the opposite side? Because your body uh, strives to be structurally in balance. So it will kind of, it'll send up warning signs whenever you're, you're overdoing one thing or not doing another thing enough and not creating that balance, right? And your posture will be affected and other different things. So um, just make sure you kind of take a step back, look at your training, see what maybe needs to change as well. How tall are you, by the way? Also, who are some of your favorite fighters and why did you stop MMA? So I get a lot of questions asking how tall I am and how much I weigh. Um, and I kind of understand that. Uh, I'm six feet tall and I'm 190 to 195 pounds. Um, and I know a lot of people ask that because body weight movements and different things can be easier if you're a smaller person, right? Like take me versus Ida Bortel. I'm not saying he's better than me because he's smaller than me, but, um, but like a lot of people will write off what he does because he's 145 pounds at, uh, five, eight or five, seven or something like that. But, uh, realistically it doesn't matter what size you are. It's how you handle your own body weight. And that's why it's amazing what he does. Um, he can move in different ways or move uh, much more fluidly than a lot of people that have his level of muscle mass on his body. So um, don't think about the muscle mass so much as uh, just what you can do and how well you move and how healthy and athletic you are. Um, but who are my favorite uh, MMA fighters? Um, I'd probably say Edson Barbosa would be my number one. He's always been my favorite ever since I watched his very first fight. Um, where he beat the guy by leg kicks. I really um, just enjoyed his dynamic and crazy style. And I used to watch his training videos to, um, to kind of pump me up before I went to training and stuff like that. And just how explosive and athletic and strong he was. And seems like a genuinely pretty nice guy. And I uh, had a couple of conversations with him on Twitter, which is pretty cool. Anthony Pettis would be another one. Um, he was kind of on a little bit of a skid there, but I still really like his creativity uh, of striking and his dynamic um, kicks that he does. It just kind of, I always liked that. I always liked ninjas as a kid, so he was pretty much like the uh, modern embodiment, I, I thought. And uh, Jason Sago as well. Um, he's a great guy. He's, uh, I got the opportunity to work with him a little bit and get to know him quite well. Uh, he's the fighter out of Prince Edward Island, so definitely check him out and support him. Um, he's an awesome guy and has some pretty wicked kicks as well. Um, and why did I stop? Um, I moved for college, so that was a big part, but I did end up training with Jeff Jocelyn a little bit when I was in Hamilton and, uh, I definitely did enjoy it, but, um, I found the hunger kind of law or I, it kind of died down. And I think a lot of that was because, you know, I was known as the MMA fighter and everyone around me kind of identified me as that or put me in that kind of box. And then when I moved, I was able to escape from that and see that there was much more to me than that. And I had lost many aspects of myself because I would do what I thought an MMA fighter should do versus what I really wanted to do or what was inside myself. So um, I tried to kind of uh, escape that a little bit. And I still do love MMA and I still will go back and train. And I like to spar with the guys and stuff every once in a while. And practice jujitsu and stuff, but, um, I saw it was more just a branch of me rather than the whole tree, um, which it kind of occupied before. So I just kind of created that separation and I'm also kind of nervous of injuries and stuff like that. So, um, especially when I was training for the circus school edition, I stayed away from it a little bit more than I normally would have. 
uh, just to prevent having little injuries that are kind of inevitable when you're doing full contact sports. How do you maintain muscle mass while doing gymnastics, dance, and tricking? Um, well, uh, that can be kind of dependent on a few things. One, I was fortunate to have fairly good genetics. My dad's built like a, like a Sasquatch, we always say. And my mom was quite thin, so I kind of got a mixture of the two. Um, where I can put on muscle fairly easily while maintaining a fairly low body mass. And that's um, just fortunate to genetics to some degree, but also I train much more frequently than the average person. So um, a lot of that can be due to that, that I can get away with kind of eating a higher calorie meals day to day um, because I have such a high activity level and it gets kind of put into fuels that my body can process fairly easily um, when doing athletic activities and stuff like that. But, uh, just making sure that you're not in a deficit and stuff like that. And you're getting higher, um, calorie meals that are nutrient dense and that's not macronutrient dense, but micronutrient dense as well, um, would be my recommendations and, uh, maybe do separate training outside of that that is specifically geared towards hypertrophy if maintaining a muscle mass is something that you want because um, I do that every once in a while I kind of do cycles of strength and hypertrophy and every once in a while endurance um, so that would be my recommendation what does your training routine look like uh, that's constantly changing when I was in Prince Edward Island I did uh, gymnastics every Thursday I did ballet every Wednesday in a group class and then um, it was typically Mondays and Thursday. I did private lessons for ballet. Um, and then I also did about five to six strength training sessions a week. Um, usually two bent arm, two straight arm, and two legs. Um, and every once in a while I'll go rock climbing on top of that as well. And, uh, and I would do um, a lot of stretching. Uh, as well, so I like to warm up with my stretching and cool down with my stretching depending on how much time I had uh, And I worked at a gym, so it made it a little bit easier for me I would just kind of stay between clients sometimes whenever I had uh, a few minutes to just kind of really um, Get the stretching in but the stretching wasn't always in conjunction with my training. It was kind of whenever I had time for it um, in my in my training but uh, if you'll watch my bent arm straight arm um and leg strength videos, you kind of get an idea of what are the different movements that I do and what um, what my training would look like. But I'm actually going to document uh, what I'm currently doing. I'm writing up a training program now, and I'm going to take you through that with me uh, in the near future. What are your current goals? Um, so current goals, it's I'm at a weird stage right now because I just had uh, so much of my training focused on one date, and now that that date has passed and I was not able to achieve what I wanted to, um, I get to kind of take a step back and really look at some of the things and what I really want to do and what are some of the things that um, mean the most to me. And I'm still somewhat in that process, but I do have a few things that I want. One, I really want to explore parkour more. Uh, we have a gym nearby that I would like to uh, go to more often and hopefully get to film there uh, once I get to know people and stuff. And uh, there's also some circus um, trainers that I um, connected with a little bit and I'm hopefully going to be training with them next week and uh, kind of get an idea of what they do and uh, see if I can learn from them as well. But uh, more specifically, I really want to get my one-arm handstand again. My wrist was injured for a while from a snowboarding accident. Um, so I had to put it on the back burner. But I want to bring that back out into um, kind of full-time training. And then I want to get a planche as well. Because uh, that's kind of been something I always uh, desired for a long time. Much more than other things. I don't really care about the one-arm chin out that much, to be honest. Or levers and stuff like that. I can do a lever more or less. What is the best exercise for building strength to control the kick up to the handstand? Well, gatherings work well. You can find those in my very first handstand videos or some of Ida Portel's videos. Uh, basically, it's in a headstand or handstand and touching your feet to the floor and then lifting them to the ceiling 
Uh, it's good to have a wall at your back so you don't tip over if you're not comfortable with your headstands. Um, then reverse hypers are another option if you have a reverse hyper machine and back extensions are another one. Just anything that kind of uh, involves the hinging at the hips where your legs and your upper body are fairly straight. Um, good mornings as well could work in that situation, just building that strength up. But uh, the issue typically isn't the strength to do it as much as it is the balance. Um, it's a very efficient movement. You don't need a lot of strength in it. So uh, it's probably having a better handstand at the top and making sure that you have great balance there. The kick up shouldn't be much of a problem after that. I can barely touch my toes. I'm naturally very inflexible. How much time do I need to get to your level? It really depends on how often you do it. Stretching is something that you can achieve quite a bit in uh, a relatively short period of time. Like uh, within six months, you can get quite a lot of progress depending on how much time you dedicate to it and ensuring that you don't overstretch as well. But um, you can do more than just like static stretching. You can have fairly intense routines involving weights and bands that can really get you a lot of progress in a short period of time. Um, so as with anything, it depends on how much time you're willing to dedicate to it. The more time you spend, uh, the, the more volume and time that you spend throughout a week, uh, the shorter the period of time will be. Um, but I'm also fairly in naturally or naturally inflexible. So don't let that hold you back. It's what you train towards, right? I'm more naturally explosive and uh, I don't bend that well. So um, just dedicate some time to it. And if it's kind of the weakest link in the chain, dedicate more time to it than you would your other stuff. So that takes us to the end of all the questions. I wanna thank you guys very much for uh, asking all the questions, whether it be through private messages, through the comment section or anything like that. Um, feel free to ask more questions. I will do another Q and A in the not too distant future. Maybe if it's, uh, if I get enough questions, I'll do it kind of monthly or something like that. Subscribe if you enjoyed it, if you learned anything, and uh, make sure to like the video if you actually like the video, and thank you for supporting the channel.